First of all, what we have to do as scientists, we have to explore the whole solution space. Exploring the whole solution space means we have to take into account all the technologies. We have to take into account the institutional requirements to deploy these technologies. We have to clarify the role of international climate policy, assigning a price uh, uh, on, on carbon and so on. So, and for all these purposes, we need scenarios. Because thinking about the future, we need scenarios. Scenarios is, to a certain extent, not a prediction about the future. It's about the exploration of the future, giving the people a quite reasonable sense uh, what how, how the, the future could look like. And therefore, I always perceive uh, carrying out scenarios as a kind of mapping, an unknown landscape, so to say. And I perceive the scenario and the modeling teams as cartographers. They try to inform the policymakers and the stakeholders what is what are, could be the guiding principles in an unknown uh, landscape. In that sense, scenarios are incredibly important. But it would be absolutely dangerous to rely only on one scenario because you have to give the stakeholders a sense of the options they have. And as scientists, we should not tell the politicians and the stakeholders you should go exactly this way. Instead of that, we should explain them there are many ways to achieve different goals, but we have to be explicit about the underlying costs, about the underlying risk, and about the underlying institutional requirements. Um, what I wanted to say is start with is this is a model that is joint work by the OECD and uh, PBL, Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency. And it's basically the idea is to put an environmental outlook to 2050. And for that, we need an economic background, social economic developments until 2050, and then paint a picture about four different environmental themes, how we can have, um, how we can have projections on the state of the environment, but also on policies, how we can improve environmental uh, state. And uh, the four themes that we chose are climate change, biodiversity, health and environment and water issues. And of course, to do that, we needed to couple uh, a general equilibrium model to explain the, the economic side of it and a more land-based model to explain the, the physical side of it. The land-based model is the image model of PBL, and that has a lots of details in terms of it has a grid cell structure to work uh, out where uh, agricultural crops, for example, are produced, um, but also to find out what the impacts of climate change are on the different areas in the world. And then it links that land use model to all kinds of indicators, for example, to uh, health and uh, health indicators such as uh, particulate matter, and uh, malaria, etc., and all kinds of indicators for that. And it links also to different models, smaller models, that look at indicators for biodiversity and that look at water use and water quality. Now, the difficulty was with trying to come up with consistent estimates from the economic model that we use at OECD and the more land-based model at, uh, that images. So therefore, we, what we did is actually a two-phase procedure. First, we made an economic projection that we felt is a, is a reasonable projection for a business as usual, where you do not have environmental pressures and environmental policies. And then we fed that into the land-based model, the biophysical model, image. And then they came up with projections then for what the land use implications are and the biophysical implications. And then from that, we took back some of the implications from, from the environment back on the economy. Although that is notoriously a very hard thing to do and uh, we are also very, not very happy with the way we did it. It was very loose. We only could do a very little bit of that. But the ambition level was in principle to make the both models really talk to each other, not only in terms of, of this baseline construction, but also in terms of policy. So the second step we did is that we were working on several climate change policies and we then run both, the, both models with the same, exactly the same policies. And then we're trying to figure out what the differences are in, uh, in consequences. So then the image model would be more capable of discussing what are the implications for climate change itself, what are the implications for biodiversity also of climate policies, and also what are the implications uh, basically for the land use system. And then we would get these land use uh, emissions, for example, and other, uh, and other aspects of the land use model back into our general equilibrium model and calculate the cost of the environmental policy.